Hello, Nigerians. It's that time again of True Nigerians, Heroes of Our Time, a program that is all about Nigeria and Nigerians. Today, I have a special guest on the program. Um, this is very unique to me because um, um, this particular guest is a major distraction to me, but I will explain that later. My guest is really, really loaded, um, both internationally, nationally, anyhow you want to look at it, she has achieved so much, which is why we're having her on True Nigerians Heroes of Our Time. Okay, talk is cheap. My guest on the program is a motivational speaker and author of many books, many, many books. You need to see those books. She's a style icon, she's a host, a model, fashion designer, ambassador. She's also known as Empress of Miami. Yeah, that's in the United States, man. <laughs> <laughs> and she's also called High Maintenance. Oh, yeah. But the one that I love most is that because she brings a lot of joy to a lot of people, she's called Sunshine. Sunshine. You're my sunshine, baby. You're my sunshine, baby. Well, end of song. <laughs> <laughs> if you are ready for the first time on True Nigerians Heroes of Our Time, let's meet Ife Ike. <clears throat> our first and traditional question, Ife. How would you define a true Nigerian? A true Nigerian, I think, is someone that cares about Nigeria and her people, someone that cares mm. about the growth of Nigeria and actually takes action steps, uh, you know, to contribute to the betterment of Nigeria. Like, mm. you have to contribute to the growth mm. of Nigeria to actually be a true Nigerian. It's not just being a citizen. I agree with you totally. Yeah. So you see, it's not about you just sitting there and always complaining about how bad mm -hmm. things are in Nigeria, but contributing exactly. as a true Nigerian. You don't like it? Mm. Work towards changing it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you don't like Nigeria, work towards changing it instead of complaining. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's good. Thank okay, you. Okay, um, if you... You've, you, you're an author, you've written a lot of books. Let me start from books. Um, um, uh, peering through the depths of life. That caught my attention. Um, what, what do you mean by that? And, and, and how did you become an author? Well, first of all, peering through the depths of life. You know, there's an element you know, I'm sorry, there's a depth to every element of life. Mm. Everything in life has a depth to it. Mm. And in order for you to understand the depth of it, you have to peer through to unravel its intricacies, yeah? Mm. So um, my book is an inspirational book. I address issues of life. Mm. And I don't just address them from the surface or from the peripheral. Mm. I address them from the depth. So okay. I look at everything in four dimensions. I want to understand how it happened, what happened, what could have happened, and how we can deal with it. So I think very deeply about each situation. And then I just share my thoughts in my books. That's what I do, because it's all about finding solutions to problems. We're always going to go through these problems because problems are the inevitable component of life, yeah, and the elements of our growth. But we mm. cannot run away from the problems, right? We can't. Mm. We have to find solutions to the problems. Oh, the problems will repress us, will stifle us, and you know, um, deprive us and, and even deter our growth and our success in life. So instead of running from the problems, you try to fix them. So I'm like the fixer. I want to fix them. I want to look for ways to fix them. I want to look for ways to address them. Mm -hmm. so that we can live to our full potential, so that we can navigate our lives with ease. Mm -hmm. 
mm. right? So th th that that was what motivated yes, you into, into writing, writing the, book. the books. Yes, because you know, also I came from a lot of struggle, excruciating struggles, and you know, um, I happen to have survived by the grace of God. You know, mm. with the help of the Holy Spirit, I survived. But not everyone can survive. Not everyone is spiritual and not everyone can tap into their willpower to rise above their problems or, or to take control of their problems. So those of us that are able to do so with the help of God, because you can't even do it without the Holy Spirit, without God, yeah? yeah. So yeah. those of you that have, those of us mm. that have been able to rise above our problems, that have, been able, that have learned to deal with our problems effectively, mm. our responsibility is to transfer that strength, that energy to other people because everyone confronts one type of problem or the other. Everyone. Is there anything you've gone through I that wish. has made you this strong? <laughs> Or, no, because no, sometimes, don't. you know, when the rich people talk about this thing, it's just talk because they've not really experienced it. Experienced it. it. Uh -huh. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah. No, darling. I've experienced it all. I've experienced the homelessness, the hunger, the confusion, the low self-esteem. I've experienced, you know, physical affliction. For instance, when I was barely three years old, you mm. know, I was burned. Yeah, so I'm a burn survivor. And, oh, burnt, I even what had do you mean by burn, burn fire, burn you know, like scarred, wounded, right? Mm. Like most part of my body. So I mm. grew up with a lot of pain, like physical pain, mental and emotional pain. I even suffered mental trauma for over 20 years. Mm. So I'm not the girl that came from Silver Spoon or from perfection and from a perfect world. I don't know what a perfect world is. Mm. I actually created the perfect world that you see, mm. yeah? So no, I don't know that. I came from, I mean, what is it that you can, go through in life that bring you so much pain i've been through them already mm. i've never known a perfect life i've never known um you know a perfect world it, like complete peace never had to no 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 no. it started from barely the age of three so i've had to struggle to find my own place in this world i've had to struggle to develop my self-esteem i've had to struggle to be heard to have an opinion that people can listen to. I've had to struggle to just love myself because I hated myself because of the burn and, and all the pain and the rejection from all the people and the condemnation from all the people. I've gone through it all, the hunger, sometimes like three days, I go with just one meal, you know, and I have to dance to even get make that money. You know, like in this culture years ago, mm. I don't know if they still do that, where you go to a party and you dance, like, yeah. ah, she know how to dance, they give you money. I fed like that. Mm. Do you understand? I mean, I've <laughs> slept on, on, on the hallway, people's corridors, slept in the car, you know, fall asleep in a nightclub. As a little girl, I'll follow grown people to the club because I didn't have a place to stay. And while they're dancing, I'm sleeping because I needed to sleep. So, no, I've been through it all. So I understand low self-esteem. I understand homelessness. I understand hunger. I understand rejection. I understand condemnation. I understand, you know, like viciousness. I understand hate, extreme discrimination, because I've been through them all. So when I address issues of life, I'm not coming from a place of imagination. You know, there's a difference between a master and a teacher. A teacher studied. They learned from other people. They read from books. They imagined. Mm. A master came from an experience. Yeah. So I am not a teacher. I'm a master of what I do, because it comes from my depth. Mm. Do you understand? It's from my accents. It's not from my mind, where I have to read and mm. memorize and mm. imagine and, and think about. No, 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 no. It stems from my accents, who I am. Everything that I am is from imperfection. I created perfection from imperfection. So my books, that's what they project. Mm. You understand? Mm. You can create a perfect world from an imperfect world. Because you're never going to find a perfect world. We all go through something. It may not be like mine. Mm. Your struggles may not be like mine. But that doesn't negate the fact that they are struggles. Do you understand that you're actually going through them? I always say what trivializes or magnifies a problem is your state of mind, your limitation. Yes? 
even your physical condition, your financial condition, they can determine how you perceive the problem or how it can affect you. Are you, are you saying it shouldn't be like that? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this, that everyone goes through a problem and everybody's problem is big. You cannot say this is bigger or this is smaller. It depends on the state of mind, your condition. Was there times when you feel like suicidal or like giving up? Oh, darling, and all that? I attempted suicide at age eight. I was eight years old when I tried to kill myself because I couldn't take the pain anymore. I couldn't wake up and have to go through the pain. The, the, you know, Nigeria has two weather seasons raining and dry season so every rainy season i'm a little okay because the weather is cool yeah dry seasons i suffer because my skin the the the, the scar will itch so much and i will scratch until i bleed and that means i always had a fresh wound every dry season you're going through that you're a little girl and then there was another problem i had a bed wet problem i used to wet the bed I was born with a weak bladder. But of course, this is not what Nigerian parents or families understand. They think that when a child wets the bed, it's because she's stubborn, she's wicked. She's, no, 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 darling. It could be a medical problem. But you would never know unless you go to the hospital and try to understand what's wrong with your child. I didn't know that. It took marriage. It took marriage to identify that problem. Mm. It was my husband's, fa my ex-husband's mother that took me to the hospital and they tightened my bladder. And then it stopped. I wet the bed till I was 17 years old. So I went through all kinds of abuse because the children in my vicinity, in our community, oh, you know, bum bum body, pissy pissy for bed because I had the body burn and then I'm wet in the bed. My goodness. Oh, and then, oh, mommy, water. Oh, she looks, she's mommy, water picking. Bum, bum, body, pissy, pissy for bed. So this is what, so I literally, it's like the abuse the, is the physical pain, is the mental so pain. It means the that some of those... Emotional pain. Some of those, some of those uh, difficulties came from our kind of tradition. Our tradition, the aspects of our tradition that are very destructive, very destructive. I'm telling you, there are a lot of things in our tradition that I think it, we should it, take off. It forces you into suicide. People say, oh, how can someone want to commit suicide? If you haven't been there, you would never know the degree of that problem. You will never understand the state of that person's mind because you're not going through that problem. Sometimes like, you go through certain situations that why do I want to continue? Why do I want to keep living in this wicked world? I saw the world as a wicked world. In fact, when I left Nigeria, I was scared of even Nigerian people. I didn't want to be around them because I thought they were very wicked people. When you will see a girl that is beautiful just because she's not the girl next door. In America, we call a regular girl the girl next door. Because she's not the girl next door, she's not the normal looking girl that you're used to, then you, you believe or you assume that she's the reincarnation of the water goddess, mommy water. And then you ask yourself, a nation that is so religious, that believes so much in God, how can you credit something beautiful or something perfect to the devil? Why couldn't you say, wow, look at God's creation. Look at God's masterpiece. Mm. Look at God's artwork. Why couldn't you say, this is God's greatness. Why do you say, mommy water or banj? Why do you have to always credit evil spirit for something peculiar or something nice or even something eccentric why God is a mysterious God he creates you according to your purpose the way I look I believe was because of my purpose in life do you understand I got to understand that as I grew as I hung out around a lot of Jewish people in California and they made me understand how special how beautiful and how everything about me is according to the will of God for my life that's why the devil wants to destroy you early exactly let me tell you something the strings of destiny you know this thing that we do in our culture where we hurt children because oh this is a witch 
you know, because they still do that in, in, in Akwaibo, in Calabar, yeah? Mm. Oh, they, they pick up this child and go, this child is a witch. Let's, let's kill him. Oh, this albino, oh, let's kill him. There's a bunch in this one. Let's do this, let's do that. What they are doing is actually they are, they are contributing to the brokenness of society. So they're contributing to, you know, the lack, backwardness. the backwardness, the stagnancy that we suffer. Because those children, they've been created for a purpose. A purpose to establish something that God willed upon that land. And you go and you kill that child. Maybe the child is supposed to be the president that will bring about, you know, a positive change. Maybe the child that will be, maybe that preacher that will set his children free. Maybe the child that will bring the one with the biggest vision that would bring about the growth, the progress of that nation, you destroy that child. I mean, look at what you have achieved. Do you now. understand? The strings of destiny is a connectivity that enables us to develop ourselves as individuals, develop one another, and contribute to a society. So when you kill this one child, those people whose destinies are stringing along with this child you have destroyed, or you have impeded their growth, you have deterred their progress because the source is being destroyed. We must be careful what we do with our children, how we condemn people. Listen, because who this person is and what they do, you know, do not resonate with you. Doesn't mean they're less of a person, or doesn't mean that Mamiwata or Banjo or these lesser gods. I call them lesser gods because the Almighty Jehovah, the, all, the Elohim, the Rose of Shalom, the Ruby of the Valley is the greatest and he does all things powerful that you cannot even begin to understand beyond man's comprehension i don't care how handsome how educated that you are there are things that god will do that you cannot even begin to fathom That's and true. it's okay you cannot understand everything in life don't try too hard to understand everything and something you don't understand i don't know research it's got nothing to do with your journey in life god will only reveal to you something that is an element of your journey. Mm. So we, we have to address these issues. All of those aspects of our tradition that are destroying our children, they must be abolished. I totally agree with you. You know, there was a time when, if you have twins in Nigeria, they would kill And it took, it took Mary twins. Slessor. Yeah? It took Mary Slessor, right? Yeah. For that to be abolished. Yeah. Because human beings, you know, make this, laws and these traditions and all of that and we human beings can abolish them and but today it, everybody's praying for twins do you want some people are even praying for one you're talking about twin you know what is wrong with having twin this is god's creation this is god's creation why do you condemn what god created why do you condemn god has a reason and then there's also the ones that you sh they shave a woman's hair or wash the cups and have the woman drink if your husband dies uh, they, they accuse that. you of, so of the, uh, they, they, they wash uh, they, how can you wash the cups and have a woman drink from oh gosh what kind of tradition is that we need to abolish such evil and destructive traditions everyone has the right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and everyone has the right to live to their full potential god has a will for us for each and every one of our lives and we have to live we have to fulfill that purpose no one should be deprived why are you attracted to community service it's like you have a passion for community service. Well, darling, like I say... Is it, is it because of your past or it's just... Oh, no. Like I say, you know, I'm a, I'm a patriotic citizen. True Nigerian. Uh, yes, a true Nigerian. And like I say, if you don't like it, do something to change it. And you can't give what you don't have. I have to repeat that. If you don't like what is going on in Nigeria, mm -hmm. do something to change it. Exactly. Beautiful. You understand? And you can't give what you don't have. You have to give from what you have. Mm. And what I have is problem solving. Do you understand? Mm. I'm all about mm. thinking about solutions and working, creating. If I have to learn something new to mm. fix that problem, I do. That's what I do. And I've, I, do, I do that constantly. Mm. So I'm thinking that in order to fix our problem, we have to also fix the people. 
right? Mm -hmm. And what I do as a motivational speaker, I try to help people balance their emotions. I try to help them change their attitude. Because you need the attitude to not change. Attitude is everything. To change your environment. Yeah. To change your life and your environment, you have to change your attitude. Mm. So I like to address those issues. You understand? So that's even what I'm doing with the Amnesty, you know, our company, Jedisco, doing this program, this, you know, uh, center, agricultural center, you know, uh, agricultural training center. And what I do as a communication director, I deal with the people's emotions. I talk to them about self-development, empowerment, compassion, interaction. I talk mm. to them about, you know, civic responsibilities. I talk, you know, about these things that would contribute to fixing the issues in our society, to fixing their issues. Because remember, Nigeria is just a geographical location. We, the citizens, make the location significant. So when you say Nigeria, we are Nigeria. If you want to fix Nigeria, you have to fix the people because the people will have to fix Nigeria. And the True. way you can fix the people is just help them with their mentality. Because they, they have, everyone is responsible to empower themselves, not government, like we think. Hmm. Government is responsible to structure the society to enable the environment upon which you can build your life, but you are responsible to develop yourself and to empower yourself. Hmm. True talk. True Nigerian indeed. Exactly. Yeah. So what I do is offer what I have. Learn what I can learn and transfer the knowledge. Because we owe each other that. Mm. Share knowledge. Mm. Right? I learn, mm. I transfer the knowledge. I study, I transfer the knowledge. Because I want to see the change. So I want to contribute to the change that I want to see. I don't want to be a nuisance. People that complain a lot, darling, I'm sorry. Those are the nuisance in our society. Mm. Don't complain. Work. Don't do complain, it. Work. work. Don't complain, work. You don't expect machines to do the work. Yeah. Human beings will do the work. The countries that we admire so much that we all want to move and live in, human beings structure those countries, not machines. It took creative minds, innovative minds. It took people that are willing and ready and passionate to structure those societies. So we have to develop the same attitude. And we have to attitude work. Attitude is a major problem our in Nigeria. major Nigeria. problem, the attitude. attitude. Because attitude. the same attitude, you know, we think, my sister should do it, my brother, why don't you do it, you do and it. And then you have a lot of incompetent people because in position. Because spirit of dependency. We struggle no. with the spirit of dependency. That's why we're begging society. We're very dependent on other people. And that's why we can't develop ourselves and develop our nation. In order for us to develop Nigeria, we have to develop ourselves as individuals. Because it's true, your own development, you can develop your environment. You can't give what you don't have. Machine cannot develop your society.